Hey, Aaron, welcome. What an amazing start to DevNet Create 2021. I was so excited to see all of that uh, that we just covered in the keynote. Um, I wanna just talk a little bit about some of what we saw because I really was excited to hear uh, some of what Grace shared with us. First, it was great to meet her. I know for a lot of you, this is your first time meeting Grace and it was so awesome to have her as part of this community now and helping us guide where we go forward in, the, in this organization. Uh, but we also talked a lot about what was accomplished over the past year, and it was so awesome seeing all of that work you've all been doing, taking these skills we've been talking about for years and putting them into action to help change things for good. Driving tech for good is one of the common themes you're going to hear across the entire event this week. Uh, so it was great to hear some specific examples of things you did to help your communities and people around the globe. Uh, it was also great hearing some of the future technology stuff that's coming out. Uh, some of the, uh, I'm a security geek at heart, so things like API security are really near and dear to me. It's the intersection of my, my career-wide focus on security and my uh, time spent in software development. So hearing uh, from Carlos about what we're doing in that space and some of the innovation that we're driving was really great to hear. And I'm looking forward to more sessions throughout the week that are gonna cover that as well. But then also hearing about things like full stack observability, which you've probably started hearing out in the market, but put a little finer point on what exactly it means to you and why as a developer you should care about it. So it is great to have all of that content come together. And then lastly, but definitely not least, uh, we've been working since 2019, since we launched the initial DevNet certs. And it is so excited to see all of that work come together uh, when they announce the actual launch of the DevNet expert certification. So I'm so excited. There is another session coming up shortly where you'll be able to hear more about it. But that is such, such a great recognition of all of that this community does. It's a way to now show that and formalize it in the form of a certification. So I hope you stay tuned after this session to hear more about that and hear what's in store for you if you do want to pursue that. So next up, uh, you know, for those of you who haven't met me, I am Eric Thiel. I lead developer experience for Cisco. And this is now my fifth DevNet Create. I was, I've been at every single one of them now. And this is such an honor to be able to sit here and see all the progression we've made. You know, we started out as a very small community uh, local event and to be able to reach the whole globe now. And last year was our first virtual event. This year we decided it was so successful, we brought it back again. And being able to follow the sun and reach you all and make sure you can all actually attend and view the content that you're interested in live including hearing a lot of regional content that might be relevant to you and your geography. It's just so great to be able to be a part of this. And for the first time, I actually get to host uh, my favorite section, which is the recognition and the demo jam. So in this area next, we're gonna talk about some of the cool things you've all built. We're gonna show you and let you show your work and what you've done. And then we're gonna recognize some of the members of the community that have been out there and helping grow the community help develop those skills in people and help them understand how they can grow their career, uh, grow their own personal skills, and then also turn around and give back. So we've had people that have attended, received some of that training, and then turned around and started giving it back as well to the community. So it's so awesome to be able to recognize everyone uh, as part of both of those segments. And I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and jump straight into this year's Demo Jam. Welcome demo jammers. I am so excited to come share all of these great examples of demos that were submitted to us from across Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Russia, as well as a few guests from other regions uh, that also submitted some demos that we thought would be interesting to you all. As usual, this is our opportunity to highlight innovations that are going on across the community. So we wanna really call out all of you that submitted your ideas. Thank you for sharing them both with the community and with us. And while we wish we could have highlighted all of them, we hope you'll enjoy the set that we picked out for you today to show just some of what's possible when you start really playing around with technology and trying new things out. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about them, you'll also be able to follow up by checking out Code Exchange and Automation Exchange on developer.cisco.com, where you can actually find sample code for a lot of these demos and see how they built them and how they work under the covers. So the first one I'm really excited to show you is from Flo and Marie, who are going to actually introduce you to a friend of theirs, Poe. Poe is a robotic arm that they've actually been doing a lot of uh, cool things with and exploring what is possible when you have a, a giant robotic arm, what kind of things can you actually do? So let's find out from them what exactly is the art of the possible with robotic arms. Hi, everybody. My name is Marie, 
And today we have some super nice things for you. We have a very nice API challenge and a use case demo. And I'll just hand it over to you, Flo. Thanks, Marie. I'm Flo, and this is Pow, the robot arm. So this is actually a seven axis robot arm, which is actually doing the COVID nozzle tests. Who would have thought? Let's go at first to the IoT demo. So we have here connected to the robot arm an IR1101, powered by a control center controlled SIM card. Also connected a Raspberry Pi. So this really cool demo, we will go into a bit, but let's first, I will challenge Marie. Hey, Marie, so can you pick up Devi with just an API, just using APIs and the robot arm? I will challenge you, let's see. Okay, Flo, thank you very much. Of course, I will accept this challenge. And we go and have a look on the API documentation, which was created with Fast API. And what we do is we go and have a look on the status of the robot and switch to Postman, which I preferably use. And to move the robot, we can um, set the position for the robot as right top. And as soon as we've done that, the robot will move. And after some other APIs, Devi will be in the basket. Oh no, somebody help us. The Defi is stuck and somehow the Panda robot is also stuck here as well. I think I need some support. Hello, this is Marie from helpyourrobot.com. So what we do is we go on the Cisco IoT operations dashboard where you can basically manage the Cisco Gateway IR1101 and establish a remote access to it with secure equipment access. And uh, we do that by connecting via SSH to your Raspberry Pi and then troubleshoot your issue. After our remote help, we also gained insights from Cisco CyberVision. This industrial security software is doing a deep packet inspection, as you can see here with industrial protocols and sending metadata to the center. Besides the vulnerabilities, we actually saw one component is requesting the kill switch domain from the ransomware WannaCry, if that isn't interesting. So thank you everyone for joining in. Keep an eye out for more cool challenges with Poe. Other than that, we wish you a very nice, happy DevNet Create. Well, Marie, that was so awesome. Now I want a robot arm for my house. I, I can just imagine the things that I could do with it if I actually had enough time to play around with it. Now our next demo presenter, I think is actually a great fit as well. Uh, Eric Pilko set out a while back when we started working from home he had needed to find a space in his house that would work uh, just like all of us did for his remote working, but he ran into some unique challenges. And after doing a bunch of automation around it, he ended up questioning himself, am I lazy or am I smart? Now, I actually can't help but think, what, what would happen if he had access to that same robot arm that uh, Flo and Marie were just showing? Let's hear from Eric what he did build and what he was able to accomplish with just a few uh, pieces of electronics that he had around the house. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching my session today. Am I lazy or efficient? Using APIs to make your life easier. I'm Eric Pilko, the leader of systems engineering for the Upstate New York public sector team here at Cisco. I graduated from Rochester Institute of Technology with a master's degree in computer science. That degree made me realize I never wanted to write code for a living, but it has certainly come in handy lately. I wanted to do a quick session on whether I'm lazy or efficient. I like to do many different things that keep me pretty busy and occupied. One way I'm able to do that is by automating simple yet repetitive tasks. Who wouldn't want to do that? This little project started at the beginning of the pandemic. The only place I could set up a home office was in my basement. Basements are great in the summer because they stay cooler than the rest of the house. The downside is that in the winter, they are also cooler than the rest of the house. I decided to reuse my noisy 31-year-old space heater to keep my home office warm. I kept it under the desk by my feet. Because the heater was so noisy, it had to be off during all my calls. The problem I had was that sometimes I forgot to turn the heater off when a call came in. I would then have to have this awkward moment where I had to disappear under my desk, turn the heater off, and I would pop back into view. Sometimes I forgot to turn the heater back on because my feet were freezing. 
So I automated that process. And then I orchestrated it. I think it's a great example of efficiency. The first thing I had to do was round up some hardware. I had the heater. I had a Raspberry Pi. I used that to run Nginx, Flask, and Python. I also had a WebEx endpoint. The only thing I needed was a plug that had network capabilities and an API. I selected the Casa HS105, and it has worked out great. The next thing I did was create a button on the WebEx board with the UI extensions web interface. This is what the exported XML looks like for the toggle heater button. The important piece of information here is the panel ID, CASA. The WebEx board passes that information to a macro that I wrote. After I created that button, the macro that I wrote for the board would send a message to the Pi when the toggle heater button was pressed. I wrote a few lines of JavaScript for that, and it looks for the CASA panel event. And then the board sends a message to the Pi. I did that through the send message function I wrote to add all the appropriate HTML headers for that message. The hard part was on the Pi. I was already using Nginx for some other web services I was hosting, so I just had to create a location to proxy requests to my Flask app. The app basically checked the power state of the plug and then flipped it. This worked out great. Just like when I forgot to manually turn the heater on and off, I also sometimes forgot to turn the heater on and off with the button. That's why I needed some orchestration. I looked at the WebEx APIs and found that I could send X feedback events for calls. I added a little code in the macro to forward those messages to the Pi. When a call was answered, the heater would turn off. When a call ended, the heater turned on. That was fantastic, unless the heater was off at the beginning of a call, or it turned, I turned it on in the middle of a call because my feed got cold. The best place to keep track of the heater state was on the Pi. I added some variables to keep track of the plug state and call status. With that little bit of extra logic, I could make sure the heater returned or stayed at the correct power state. Life was grand. I was so efficient or lazy that I didn't have to touch anything to control the heater when I was on a call. The last thing that happened was that I had to undo all that orchestration. With another kid off to college, I was able to move my home office to a warmer room. Also, Cisco acquired Babel Labs, and the AI in there was able to remove all the sounds from that noisy heater. I now toggle the heater whenever I want without negatively impacting the audio in any of my calls. Thank you. Eric, I love that demo. I really am now intrigued in other things I can do around my house. I've got so many smart devices. I actually am going to have to play around a little bit more and figure out what kind of integrations I can do with, say, my WebEx Desk Pro and add buttons to do various automations with that as well. It's a really cool idea, and I love seeing how straightforward and easy it was for you to do. Now, this next one I think is also really interesting. Uh, Hiro and Louise pulled together a demo. They had a device, and it could be any arbitrary device, but they asked themselves the question, what if I want to actually customize a workflow? Well, that's something a lot of us would want to do. I might not like the interface of some device I have, or I might want to streamline it. What is possible if, a, if you have a fully programmable device? What can you do out there to really customize the user experience and make sure it fits for just the right person? Let's see what kind of cool innovation they built and uh, what kind of technology they leveraged to do it. Welcome to our demo jam, building custom UIs using Django web, frame, uh, web framework. My name is Jairo Leon, Customer Delivery Architect in Cisco Systems. I have been in Cisco for 12 years. With me is Luis Rueda today, who is going to present the demo. And having said that, Luis, please take it away and introduce yourself. Thank you, Jairo. As you mentioned, my name is Luis Rueda. I'm a senior software architect with Cisco. I've been with Cisco for more than 14 years and for more than 20 in the industry as a, as a solution architect. What you'll see now is a video of a Django application using uh, used for web UI. In this video, we will be demoing an application built in Django that uses a view in order to query the status of the different interfaces in a CSR 1KB that we have in the backend. What we have is Python code, which uses requests in order to query via RESTConf the list of interfaces and return a dictionary that contains all the different interfaces and their statuses. If we look at the application by going here into this web page, we'll see that this dictionary is then converted into a table and using this UI allows us to enable or disable the different interfaces. We have this action button, but this, now this could be for enabling interfaces, what we have created, but it could be for anything. We could change the description, we could um, create new interfaces, anything is possible that, that is available via the RESTConf interface for the CSR 1KB. The code that we use in order to create this portal is located here in this GitHub repository. You can 
click to check and follow it and create your own Django application. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching this short video. We hope you enjoyed it and found it very useful for your company, so for your jobs. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the Daphne Create event. Hi, Robin Luis, that was so awesome. I love seeing that innovation and how you could actually build a custom tailored front end for just about any device that has an API. Uh, I'm really interested to try that around the house as well and see what kind of front ends I can build for some of my local devices I have. I hope you enjoyed this. All these demo jammers put a lot of time and effort in to build something cool, innovative, and they felt that it was important to share with the community. But again, I hope you all share your cool innovations too. Even if it's not at this event, tweet, tag us on Twitter, share it on GitHub, submit it to Code and Automation Exchange. We love seeing these cool projects that you're working on. And it helps inspire other people for things they can try or maybe even build off of yours. So thank you all for your submissions this year and your contributions uh, and sharing it all with the community. I look forward to seeing much more of this in the future as well. Now for my favorite part of the event, our DevNet Creator Award winners. Every year, this is our fourth year in a row now, we've been able to award people in the community that have really given an outstanding amount of uh, contribution back, whether that's supporting people out on social media or on the forums, sharing their knowledge, helping people out when they're stuck on something. Uh, it could be giving back code and sharing samples through things like Automation Exchange and Code Exchange, uh, or it could just be generally participating in a lot of events where they're helping the community out, grow to be better at programmability, at automation, and developing these skills that are necessary going forward in this new normal of, of automation and programmability. So I love being able to recognize, recognize all of these people. And while we wish we could give awards out to everyone that was nominated this year, we do want to call out a few specific people that really stood out as going above and beyond over the past year. So the first person I'm honored to uh, recognize is Yevgen Iosevo. Yevgen is being recognized as being an extremely active member in the developer community. Through his hard work and innovation, Yevgen has been instrumental in enabling more and more integrators and developers to build solutions with Cisco, which helps them solve a variety of different problems. In addition, his active participation in conferences and joint projects within Cisco have contributed to apps and new solutions for our ecosystem. Yevgen was brave enough to marry a skydiver and make her his business partner. He enjoys researching AI capabilities, reading, football, and windsurfing in his time away from work. Yevgen, thank you for everything that you've done for the community. We love seeing all the contribution and really helping partners grow and develop those skills and working with us to develop cool, new, innovative opportunities and solutions. Please continue sharing and, and contributing to the community. We love seeing it. Next up, I want to recognize Sergio Doniluk. Sergio is recognized for being an extremely active member in the developer community as well. Many people have commented on his commitment to innovation and programmability, as well as how happy they are that he received a Community Spotlight Award recently. Not only is Sergio active in the developer space, but his social posts and groups focused on Cisco and programmability are very well respected. In Sergio's spare time, he's helped the community where he was selected to be part of the 2021 Cisco designated VIP for Cisco community. And Sergio loves building automation tools and scripts for his day-to-day -day work and enjoys playing the electric guitar. Sergio, thank you for everything you've been doing inside of the community. We love seeing all the contributions and helping people when they get stuck on things. We look forward to seeing a lot more contribution in the future and thank you for everything you've done this past year. Next up, I wanna recognize Ali McKean. Ali is making waves in the partner world, differentiating CAE from the rest of the pack. He's a key part of his organization and their forward thinking perspective in terms of leveraging tools and services for extracting useful intelligence and insights to help customers journey, to make a simplistic approach with minimum fuss and maximum output. Ali's been tenacious at building the programmability part of the CAE business with great results. Ali has a passion for growing plants, fruits, and vegetables with his three kids aged five, six, and eight. This year, there was an abundance of raspberries that the kids didn't even share. Ali, thank you for everything you've been doing for the community. I love seeing all the innovation you're driving inside of your organization and that you're willing to give back and share those, that knowledge and insight inside of the community as well. Thank you and congratulations again.
it is so wonderful to be able to recognize all of your contributions. You've all done such a great thing for the community this past year. And again, thank you to everyone that was nominated, everyone that wasn't nominated, but is out there giving back to the community every day. We love seeing it. It is such an essential part of the success of this community to see people that are willing to share their knowledge, to share their ideas, to help support each other where, when they're struggling with something. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate all that you do to help keep the community thriving. And also thank you to all the demo jammers. Thank you for such great sharing such great bits of code. I love seeing it. I love seeing the innovation and just trying new things out. The whole idea of exploring technologies, even if it seems silly up front, it unlocks so many capabilities when you first just explore and try something out. And then you can actually leverage that for something that may be really impactful down the road. So don't shy away from just doing those fun little pet projects or those little creative things around the house because you never know when the skills you develop might actually come in useful or even just the code that you built might come in useful for something that you need to do at work or you need to do to help uh, someone in need. So thank you all for that as well. I appreciate you sharing it and look forward to another year worth of innovation ahead as we, as we head into 22 and beyond. So now what to do next? Well, I appreciate all of you that are out and active in the communities. I want to make sure you continue to engage with us throughout the year. Obviously, this event is a great opportunity to, to share information, but throughout the year, we're always active out on community.cisco.com. And I encourage you to all participate, come share your insights, answer questions, be part of that community. It's a great way to meet other people that are trying to do similar things to you and actually share your ideas. So great place to meet people when you're looking to just interact with peers. Uh, but then also uh, keep tuned into our blogs. We've got a great set of developer focused blogs on blogs.cisco.com slash developer, where you can actually watch and see what the latest technologies are that the team's playing around with, the developer advocates, and especially like trying new technologies out and documenting what, what they've found with it. But across Cisco, there's a lot of people that are working on developer interesting topics and they share that out on the blog. So it's a great place to stay in tune with what is on the cutting edge of things. Uh, and then lastly, keep an eye on our events. Well, this is our, our developer event for the year. We also do a ton of local events, regional events, virtual events, webinars, workshops, hands-on opportunities where we want you to come and get engaged and try things out and explore the technology uh, through, uh, through an interactive means. So please do keep an eye on all of those pages. Great opportunities to be part of the community, engage with us in an ongoing basis. And everyone you're gonna see over the course of this event, everyone from, uh, from our organization for the most part is fairly active on social media. So you can always track us down there too if you have questions or just wanna say hi. Now, what's in store for you the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the event? Um, so one cool thing I wanted to call out is, is our approach to content this year. So thank you everyone that submitted content. We had a ton of awesome submissions. But this year, we really wanted to rotate towards something Cisco has been doing, which is we set out and we made an innovation promise to our customers. And we outlined a number of different ways in which we are going to ensure our technology is always innovative. We're trying to push new boundaries, but we're also trying to do so in reasonable ways, in good ways. And so as part of that, we laid out this innovation promise. And I thought that was the best possible backdrop to approach this event this year with. And so when you're going through all the content, you'll see it all groups into these five different categories that came straight from our innovation promise and how we're trying to build better products. So we wanted to share that back with the community of how can you build better products? How can you build more innovative products? How can you build more secure products? And so when you're going through all the content, one, if one or more of these is of, is of interest, you can kind of search for those topics. But the ones that we talk about are customer and user experience. Obviously, if you're building any product, any solution, you want to make sure that it's very customer friendly. It's got it's easy to use. It is equally accessible. You want to make sure that it is very easy for all people to use, not just a set of people if, if it's not equally accessible. Uh, simplicity and cloud first. Obviously, everyone is driving towards the cloud and we are very supportive of that. We are working on that inside of our platforms as well, where we want everything to be cloud first. So you'll find lots of talks about cloud native technologies ways of deploying things in the cloud and things to think about when you're working in the cloud. Next up is visibility and automation. You heard in the keynote already, full stack observability. Observability is so critical right now and it's on the top of everyone's mind because with so many businesses putting so many workloads in so many places, the information is, is very disjointed and it's very important to bring all of that together into business insights and business analytics and to overlay that with 
actual business metrics so you understand the implication of a website running slow or of a server going down. You want to understand is that impacting your business or your application or something else. So that category is going to have all kinds of insights about how you can build uh, solutions that have good visibility and uh, actually can leverage automation to do some of those tasks. Next up, security built in. So this has been key to Cisco for a very long time. We've always focused on building our, our solutions with security in from the ground up. But now we're sharing a lot of that ideas and we've invited the community to do, do the same. Share, how exactly are you building security in, into your applications? I saw a number of talks uh, in the agenda that I'm really excited for, anywhere from uh, how to protect keys when they're in memory to how to actually automate and orchestrate security insights so that you can actually bring it together and act on it very quickly. So there's a great set of information out there that hopefully you'll find useful in that space. And lastly, interoperability and quality. So obviously when you're building applications, no application works in a vacuum anymore. You, it's important to make sure that it's very easy to interoperate with and it has a high quality and well-documented API so that when other people want to integrate with your applications, it makes it easy for them to consume and, and be a participant in that integration. All right, with that, I hope you have a great rest of your DevNet Create. I'm looking forward to a ton of great sessions ahead. We have four different channels that you hear, you'll hear about shortly from our hosts. And I look forward to hearing afterwards and during the event from you on social media, what are you liking? What, what ideas are you getting? And share with us what ideas you have going forward for what you can create and bring your APIs and apps to action.